If you're trying to study electrical engineering fully online, you're setting yourself up for failure. Here's why. So first of all, you're going to learn so much more in person. Studies show that when you're present, you retain more. You're more on the spot. You're a lot less likely to just doze off and forget about the lesson. Okay, you're more present. You're more aware of what's happening. You're more likely to ask questions and you're just there, right? Anything in person is a much better experience, not only if you go into a basketball game, but also for your classes also. When all of your senses are there, right? You're seeing what's on the screen. You're writing down notes or you're typing them in your computer. You're there, you're present, you're able able to listen there, everything is amplified, you retain more. Secondly, of course, you are able to ask questions. So you can ask the professor right then and there in class, you can ask after hours, you can go talk to the teacher's assistants and sit in. If there's something you don't understand, there is a chance for you to learn it. Likewise, there are going to be study sessions that are set up and specific study hours for students because the colleges and universities, they do want you to pass, right? The idea for you is to get through the program. It, you know, back in my parents' day, they grew up in socialist Yugoslavia, that was more of a good old boys club and you had to really, really show that you were, uh, you know, wanted to be a part of this club. So my dad told me stories that when he was studying engineering, he basically had his professors say that, you know, only one out of every hundred people here are going to make it. And they didn't really want you to be part of that club, right? It was more of a, a, a scarcity mentality. But here in America and in other parts of the world, the colleges want you to pass. They are businesses. They can't have a failing rate. They want you to pass. So they want to make it as easy for you as possible. So they're going to set up study hours. The TAs are going to be there. The professors are there. They're encouraged to try to get you through their program, okay? There will be specific areas and, and uh, classrooms that you can go to to keep on learning. Likewise, though, you're going to be learning from your peers, and this might be the most underrated thing. I think people forget how much you can learn from other people, and actually the best way to retain knowledge is to teach it to somebody else. If you can teach it to somebody else, that means you deeply understand the concept, and you might stumble along the way, but that means that you just have to solidify those topics that maybe weren't uh, fully clicking in your mind, right? So you also learn about the holes that you have. Also, you teach somebody else. That's the way to, way to do it. So you'll develop friendships there. And I'll talk about this a little later that allow you to learn from your friends. And that was honestly, in hindsight, that was the only way that I got through my master's program. I was not the best student in my undergrad. I was okay. But in my master's program, it was a lot more intense. And there were a group of about seven or eight of us. And yeah, we were all taking the same classes. We were all studying together. And that was how I was able to get through. And had I done more more of this in my undergrad, I think I would have been even more successful. There's a lot more hands-on learning. So there are labs that you'll go to, right? You'll be forced to use the equipment to actually create circuit boards, to test materials. You'll also be using software where you'll be able to ask questions when you get stuck. Things like MATLAB or PSPICE or SOLIDWORKS, whatever the course might require. You'll be able to ask your peers, ask the TAs, ask professors where you get stuck. So you'll be able to get pushed through and learn much faster. In the labs also, you're just there around your peers. If you can get something to work, Work, somebody else can get it to work and you can see where your holes were in your design and in your assumptions. So there's a lot of value just being there, attending the labs, attending the classes. You're going to learn so much faster. You are going to build lifelong relationships. They're going to be friends, professionals. Heck, you might even find your, your wife or husband there. You never know. Okay. It's college. Everyone's young. You'll form the study groups that I mentioned that'll help you study and learn. You'll also be able to join professional societies. There are engineering fraternities and sororities and all these different clubs and things that you can do to network, right? If you're on campus and learning from people, you're able to network a lot better because obviously you're going to meet everybody there. And guess what? Perhaps the most overlooked thing is career fairs are rolling around around this time of the year and everyone's wondering, oh, where can I get hired? Where can I get hired? Well, one of the best things that you can do is if you knew somebody who's a little bit ahead of you or even your peer, maybe they got a job and an internship somewhere. They might be looking for somebody else. If you're a good student and you're friendly with them and you've helped them out before, they might be willing to give you a referral. A referral is by far the easiest way to get an internship and even to, uh, as a matter of fact, to get hired. So when you're a junior, you're looking for internships and your senior year, you're also maybe looking for internships. By that time though, you're looking to get a full-time job. So that's when you want to have a nice network of students and friends that you've made. That way you can reach out and see where people are getting hired. There might be a spot for you if you haven't found one yet. Those things are priceless. And for the last point, I, I need to stand up for this. During COVID, something terrible happened. And yes, we all know that but something else happened that is still affecting society and that is a simple fact that people stopped going outside they stopped meeting people in person and that is not only uh, good for your heart your soul you as a person but connecting with other people is super important and it's something that I think I can't state enough it's that as engineers we feel that 
our technical knowledge is more than enough to, to get by, to be able to, to get hired, to be the best. If you know the most, then you are the best. That might be our mentality, right? Like if I'm the best at math and physics uh, and circuit design, I'll get hired on. And that's true, but every time you start a job, doesn't matter who you are, okay? Your communication skills are things that set you apart because you still need to be able to explain to other people what you're doing, all right? You'll need to tell your bosses what you're doing. You'll need to tell your peers what you're doing. And you'll also need to tell people underneath you how you're doing this and you have to mentor them. So work on your communication skills and where better than in college when it's a low risk environment, everyone's your age, you can all commiserate together because you're all stuck on a class and you're taking controls and it's tough. And you know, like the teacher or you're taking microelectronics or whatever class or electromagnetics, whatever class it might be at the time, that, <laughs> that creates a bond in a community that cannot be duplicated. These communication skills are gonna help you out not only in your engineering career when it comes time to get hired and perform well on the interview, but also just in your life in general, all right? You'll be better with people and that goes a long way. It makes things a lot easier for you.